Hello, uh, once again, uh, you're welcome guys. Let's have a look at this question. If W is this function, which is that uh, complex value function, find its derivative and determine where that function is non-analytic. So uh, let's try it. So how do we go about it? So remember, so this is very simple, but for, for determining the whether it, uh, this function, where this function is analytic, you, 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 you look at the given uh, expression. For a function to be analytic, its different its derivative must exist at that uh, given point. So if we say if a certain function is analytic at z0, then its derivative exists at z0. Right? So we will discuss that B later. But now, how do we solve for A? So let let z be equal to x plus i1, uh, just a general complex function. So therefore, uh, we want, so therefore w is equal to 1 plus x plus i1 over 1 minus uh, x minus i1. All right, we all know. So we are just plugging. Where there is z, we are plugging there. All right, simple. And if we want to multiply by uh, a conjugate to, to 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 clear off the denominator, the complex um, uh, quantity in the denominator, how do we do that? So we say one plus x i y. We multiply this quantity by one minus x plus i y all over. 1 minus x minus i y multiplied by 1 minus x plus i y. This is the complex conjugate of that. All right. So we normally do that to clear off the complex uh, quantities in the denominator. All right. So if we do that, if we do that, uh, it's very simple, guys. Remove brackets you end up with 1 minus x squared minus y squared. You can do that. It's very simple. 2yi all over. You remove bracket in the denominator. You end up with 1 minus x squared plus y squared. All right? So, uh, well... So this is, uh, if we are going to separate this denominator, uh, this first piece divided by the denominator and that 2y divided by that, you split this and get two functions, u and v, all right? So in other words, we, we need to write, to get an expression, w is equal to u plus iv. So from here, we can determine our derivative, the required derivative, all right? So let's do that. So you end up with um, 1 minus x squared minus y squared all over 1 minus x squared plus y squared plus 2y all over 1 minus x squared plus y squared i. Okay? So we can clearly see that this is our u. And this is our v. So these are the function of two variables here. Okay. So um, so by by, by the definition of uh, the derivative of a complex value function, um, we can get uh, w prime, which is just the same as dw over dz, which is the required quantity, is given by del u over del x, just the formula, right? Plus i del v over del x. So we're gonna find the partial derivative of u with respect to x 
for, for this one, the partial derivative of v with respect to x, and then plug those quantities in here, and then we are done. So let's do that. So for this one, so for this one, so it's, 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 it's we apply the quotient rule, u over v. So if you do that, you must be able to get uh, 2x squared minus 4x minus 2y squared plus 2 all over 1 minus x squared plus y squared all squared okay so let me write the final answer here it's it's it's, it's it follows guys it's, it's not difficult at all if you consider the quotient rule u over b you differentiate f over g right if you differentiate that, you say, you remember the formula, guys? It's g times f prime minus uh, f g prime all over g squared. Okay? So this is the formula that you apply for u in, uh, with respect to x. And then you do the same for the v, for this v. This fraction here with respect to x, you get 4y, 4y in brackets, minus x plus 1, all over 1 minus x squared plus y squared. So, as you can see, guys, this is the partial derivative of u with respect to x partial derivative of v with respect to x, then if you put it i, this is the required answer, right? Okay, so we have our part a is that, you can leave it like that, it's a bit nasty, but you, we can't simplify it further, you leave it like that, that's the correct answer. Then determine where f of z is non-analytic, we go back to the given function, it's not analytic when the denominator is zero, otherwise this whole expression becomes undefined, alright? So this is Anal an is nani analytic so for part b nani analytic for z is equal to one so uh, therefore th then the logos and the, the derivative of that function will not exist all right in other words let's check for z is equal to 1 plus, of course, it means the imaginary part is 0. So we can plug x is equal to 1 here. So if we put a 1 here, 1 minus 1 is a 0. Uh, and then what happens to this? It's a 0 also, according to this. It's 1 plus a 0. So y is 0. We put a 1 here, we put a 0. So then this whole thing becomes undefined. This whole thing becomes undefined. So the derivative will not exist for z equal to 1. So in other words, for x, comma y equal to 1, comma z. Okay. It will not exist. It's non-analytic at that point. So that's the uh, solution, guys. Thank you.